I'm just gonna get myself together here. It's a very full craft table today. The blanket's getting bigger. Uh, and we'll go there in a super short second. Hi, Kimberly, thanks for the super chat. I gotta make sure I got my hook. I got my scissors. I've got this giant tub of yarn. <laughs> Okay, I think we're good to go here. All right, Mr. and Stitches, you can take us to the craft table. And uh, we will get going here. I want to welcome everybody on this Friday morning, afternoon, wherever it might be, whatever time it might be, wherever you are. It is... Uh, Kind of an overcast day here at least for us and i am eager to do a little work on this mitered granny square blanket um i got the four granny squares going and we attached them on wednesday we did that that fun zigzag stitch um Don't mind me. I'm, I'm still, I think I have, I have, it's been a long week brain here. <laughs> anyway, uh, my intention was to just do the four squares, join them together, put a border on it and be done. I wanted just a nice little simple lapgan. Well, I'm still sticking with the lapgan um, concept, but now, now I want to elongate it a little bit. And I realized that every once in a while we get questions about, you know, how to turn a rec like how to turn a square into a rectangle or, you know, how many, like, can I still make a rectangular blanket off of these squares? And the answer is yes. Um, and I thought since we've been, we've been having fun with that shell stitch that goes like, first you make a square and then the make the, the mitered square, you're kind of doing corners. I thought we well, why not just continue with the whole shell stitch pattern and do some straight shell stitch and elongate the blanket. So I'm going to work up the top and off the bottom of the blanket, adding a few stripes of color before I put on the border. And um, hopefully that will show you if you've never done this kind of sort of elongation thing before, it'll show you how to do it. It's really, really simple. And we already have a tutorial on how to do the straight granny shell stitch, which is exactly what I'm going to do today. So um. Here we go. I've got a pair of scissors. I've got my yarn needle. I've got the same hook I used to make my squares and to join them. It's a J hook, six millimeter. And I've got my blanket. I'm gonna put everything to the side and I've got this gigantic bucket of yarn. So this is a, for better or for worse, a scrap Afghan. Um, I've been, I've been kind of, I had a couple of, Actually, I had several balls of yarn in here that have been kind of a, a tangled mess. And so last weekend I was rewinding them um, after I finished making the uh, the squares. I had to rewind my balls of yarn and I made these squares using these balls of yarn. One, because I really like how the colors look together. But two, they've been sitting on kind of in a mess um, in my stash for a while and I wanted to just address them. So they're not all the same. Some of them are slightly different weights. There's certainly different amounts of yarn. And so this is going to affect how the rest of this blanket looks going forward. For example, this is all the gray I have left. And um, I love it, but it's not enough to even do like stripes. So I still want to incorporate the rest of this into the blanket somehow. So I think I'm going to make like a little tiny accent of some sort with this. And I'll get to that later. And the rest of the blanket striping is going to be primarily made up of these four colors. And in particular, this has I have the least amount of this um, current color. I have the most of the orange. So I'm gonna start with the orange. And another reason I wanna start with the orange is because I joined the blanket with the orange. And I really enjoyed, um, I really enjoyed how this looked. It kind of pulled that focal orange piece into the rest of the blanket. And then um, I want to continue that. So I want it to look intentional and I want it to continue to look intentional. So I'm going to actually work a couple of stripes off the top and off the bottom of the blanket with my orange to start. 
So that is where I'm starting from. How is the stream looking to everybody? Um, I've got, I've kind of got it going on my phone here, but it's buffering constantly and it looks like it, I might have a bit of a, a delay. So I don't know how everybody else is, uh, is seeing it. Hopefully you're seeing it much better than I am. Am I going to back out and reload? Okay, I will do that. I'll take my own advice. I will back out and I will reload. <laughs> Give me one second, everybody. Everyone says hello. Happy to see you today. I am really happy everybody could make it. It's um, it's uh, it's just we're getting, a, uh, we're getting a lot of reports of good quality, good sound. Okay. Good so it's just my side. Yeah, I, here I am. I'm trying to to kind of get it going again. All right. All right. Well, as long as it looks good out there, then that's all that really matters. I've got my orange. I've added a slip knot to my hook. I'm going to address the top of my blanket first. So let me just get this out of the way. And whenever you're working with a blanket, you know, real estate <laughs> is a kind of a, a unique, it's, just, it's, a, it's a rare thing. So I've got very little space to work with here. So I'm gonna have to sort of pause every once in a while and just sort of reshuffle my work. But here is the top of the blanket. I'm gonna kind of fold it so that I'm, it's not kind of bunched up in front of me and I can continue to work. I'm gonna join my yarn in the top corner space of my blanket. So I'm working across the top to start. So I'm only gonna work across the top and then I'm gonna work across the bottom. So here we go, I'm gonna join my orange yarn with now will I join with a slip stitch and chain three or will I join with a standing double crochet you know what I'm going to join with a standing double crochet we did a short video um, on how to do this on the channel earlier this week um, so if you've never done a standing double crochet stitch it's helpful not all the time but um, sometimes it's it's a nice stand-in for the chain three uh, thing and of course, it's an actual double crochet. It looks like the other stitch is sitting next to it. So that's kind of nice. Um, this, much like the mitered part of the square, starts with a shell or three double crochet in the corner space. And then I'm going to chain one and work three double crochet into each of those chain one spaces all the way across. That's just to get us started. And a big thank you to the members who are here today. I see there's a, a little membership milestone. I, I didn't get a chance to see who it is, but I can see it sitting there at the top. So thank you. And uh, um, just a, a quick reminder, we get asked this sometimes, but the best way you can help us um, keep the show on the road here and keep it going, keep the lights on, et cetera, is to uh, pick up a pattern at our Etsy shop or become a member. We really appreciate the support. It does a lot to help keep us going. Um, and of course, if you're subscribed and you're able to sort of just catch our videos and share them with your friends, uh, especially, you know, hitting the like button, all the things you hear us YouTubers say, it really does make a difference. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, and thank you all for spending some time with us today. It, uh, it makes us feel really happy to know we have such a fantastic community that's there and wants to hang out and do some creative stuff and get busy with hooks and yarn. It's just the nicest way to start the weekend. So there we go. That is the shell stitch worked across the first few spaces. It looks very typical. It looks just like your regular granny stitch or your granny. It's like I'm like I'm just like I'm working across the top of a regular old granny square. Nothing out of the ordinary yet. Because this is a DK weight yarn, so this is a lighter yarn category than some of the other yarns I'm using in this blanket. I'm trying to be kind of relaxed with my tension so that I don't have stitches that are much more visibly smaller than the stitches in the rest of the blanket. Oh, I just love the granny shell stitch. It is so, so meditative. I'm going to get all the way across to the seam between squares because this is a big this is another big kind of question that a lot of people run into and you know frankly I've made dozens of granny square projects at this point in my life and depending on how you join them depending on the size of the yarn you use and the sort of the stitchery it can always be a little bit different when you get up to that join 
So here we go. Normally, I would work a shell into the next space, which is this corner space on the first square right here. And then I would jump across to the next shell. But if I had made a very tight seam, so let's say I had sewn my squares together or single crocheted or slip stitched them together and there was a nice tight seam there, I might skip the two corner spaces and work into the top of the seam. But because I used that zigzag stitch and you can see there's that, that lovely spacing between the squares, I'm actually going to work a shell into the corner space of the blanket a shell into the top of the seam, that zigzag join, and then another shell into the next corner space of the next square. And the reason that I, I get here and I think about it is because I don't want to have too many stitches running across the top and bottom of my blanket because that'll make it kind of flare out. But I also don't want to have too few stitches because then that will maybe like pinch the whole thing together. So I'm literally staring at it going, yep, there's room for three shells across there because once this blanket is sort of blocked and it's kind of in use and it's the weight of that blanket is kind of starting to pull on that seam so that you see more and more of that pretty little zigzag lace effect, that extra shell needs to be there. So this is what it's gonna look like. Here's that corner space of the next blanket square or the first square I should say that I'm in. Gonna work my little shell into that chain one now i'm going to find the very middle of the seam so there's the chain that i worked between the squares i'm going to use that i'm also going to work over top of that little tiny tail a little bit so i'm going to actually get my hook right into that let's see here right into that chain and I'm gonna work the shell that sits in the middle of the seam. And then into the corner space of the next blanket square. And before I go anywhere, I'm gonna stop, and I'm gonna take a look at it, and I'm gonna decide if it works. So that feels, now see there's a little bit of like bunching up here. I wonder if I could have, there's a little more space there. So I'm gonna change where I put that middle shell. So I'm gonna put that a little closer to the edge because that, so I'm gonna use the stitch, the part of the stitch that actually sits up against the other square. Let's see how that goes. This is why <laughs> you've often heard me say, there are no rules in crochet. It's whatever works best at the time, according to the yarn and hook and tension of the user. There, that's a little more even. So now when the whole thing is pulled apart or the weight of the blanket is kind of pulling on that seam, that will keep that nice and even across the top. So that looks better to me. There's an even space here, there's an even space there. Yes, okay, I'm happy with that and off I go. I chained one before I left, and now it's just three double crochet, chain one in each of those spaces. And this is the only row that I have to do any kind of thinking about the seams. The row, the foundation row of a border, or what I'm doing today by working some straight granny shell stitch back and forth across the top and the bottom of the blanket. It's just that establishing row where you have to do some thinking, uh, because after that, everything just works like it normally does. So the, the next row of the granny shell stitch will just be looking at regular shells and spaces all the way across. There are no more seams. <sighs> Anybody else extremely glad that it's Friday? <laughs> I'm just so pleased that we've got another little week tucked under our belts and we're heading into a, a weekend, hopefully hopefully a very crafty weekend, hoping to get some good laughs in, do some cooking, I might even get some cleaning done this weekend, I'm kind of falling behind on my spring cleaning, Mr. and Stitches and I like to do a, a, a nice spring clean, typically in March, but we kind of bailed on that this year. <laughs> Uh, Barbara says that 
27 days ago she received a gift membership. How do I continue that membership? Oh, um. So Mr. and Stitches is just, I don't know if you can hear him. Um, he's just, he was just saying, Barbara is asking how she can continue her, her gifted membership. So um, if you were gifted a membership and you'd like to continue it, we think this is how you do it. You go to, you click on the Jada and Stitches name underneath the video, and that'll take you to our channel homepage. And then you look for those little tabs that say, you know, videos, live, playlist, membership, community. You want to tap on membership. And somewhere in that membership um, tab, there is information on how you can renew, or I think you can get there by clicking on the join button too. Um, if you click on the join button, it'll tell you what your current membership status is. And if you want to continue it, there should be prompts there for you to do that as well. I think there's there. there this is still new, the whole sort of membership gifting thing. So I think they're working very quickly at YouTube to try and make it as um, as clear and easy a process. <laughs> so I guess just clicking on the join button would probably be the, the quickest way to find out how to do that. And there should be prompts available for you there. It's kind of like um, if you click on the little super chat button in the in the chat box, that gives you like prompts on how to, to send a super chat. It's the same thing if you click on the join button. So if you're an existing member, it kind of gives you information about your membership and how to upgrade or or change your membership status. And then if you want to continue it or discontinue it, I think all the information is there too. Um, I hope that helps. And I hope that's right. <laughs> all right. I'm at the end of the row. I'm working my last shell into that chain two corner space at the end of the blanket. So before I do anything else, oh, I am already like this. Okay. I can see that this looks a little bit poofy through here, but I think that's going to be okay because this is going to have weight pressed on it. And if I, I really don't think there was any other way for me to do, could I have switched, skipped it? Okay, I think we should do a poll. I love doing these things. I would like to know, um, and if Mr. Insit just gets it into a poll, then great. If not, you can just start answering in the chat. Do you think I should leave these three shells running across the seam the way I have them here? Or do you think I should take it out back to this part and just skip that middle shell and see what it looks like just with the two shells and not the three shells and see if that maybe looks a little better? I'd like to know. So should I, I guess the quick answer is, Leave it at three or try it at two. And uh, what? Are... Pressure on me. <laughs> Sorry, Mister. Okay, so leave it at three, try it at two. That's going to be the short. Yeah, short leave it at three or try it at two. We'll do a quick thing, and then I will. I will. So that's what I think it'll look like at two. So if I just pinch it together, that gives you an idea of what it'll look like at two. I don't know if you can see that. Um, or if I leave it at three. And just so you know, I don't mind taking things out and trying it six ways to Sunday. That is that is one of the things I love about crochet. I can easily pull it out and I can easily try it again. So uh, we see two, two, leave it, leave it at three, try it at two, two. <laughs> Donna's been singing, it's finally Friday. Donna, I did a Friday dance this morning when I got up. <laughs> um, let everyone know I'm going to post the link to the joint membership area and that should have all the information anyone needs. Okay. Mr. Sitch just wants me to let you know if you can't hear him, he's going to post a link to the join area that should have information on the membership thing from that we were just discussing a moment ago. So he's going to post that link. So if you need to see more information on memberships, how to join, how to, join, how to change your membership. Yeah, all that stuff. It should all show up there. So he's going to post that link. Um so everybody's two. I would leave it at three. I tried both ways and mine puckered at three uh, and it allows more fluidity, says Sakura. I like that. It looks good, but maybe try it at two. I uh, just made a bunch of your water bottle bags for a craft show. Oh, lovely. Yeah, I hope your craft show is nice and cozy, Christina. We have um, 60, 73 votes so far. Okay. I'll let that go for a bit. Yeah, let the voting go for a little bit longer and then uh, I will either leave it at three or try it at two. I'm... I'm on the fence, to be honest. I'm thinking two might be okay because I always put that chain one in between, but I kind of like 
I like three and I just, I know down the road that the weight might, ah, but that does feel a little, just a little bit loose to me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. TGIF. Exactly. Mr. And stitches. <laughs> I was putting it right on the screen for everyone. Hmm. I don't know. I'm thinking I might try it too. All right. What's the, uh, what's the poll at Mr. And stitches? That sounds good. You can call it a, uh, yeah, you can call the poll there. Perfect. All right. I'm going to go with whatever the chat says. So try it to 62%, leave it at three, 37%. Okay. I'm taking it out. I'm going to try it at two. The community has spoken. Let's do this. Out it comes. I know some frogging kind of upsets some people, but somehow I, I find I kind of, it's like reverse crochet. I kind of like it. <laughs> okay. I am back to the end of the, the edge of the first square. I chained one. I'm going to skip the join completely. So like I said in the past, normally what I do is I do one shell here and one shell here. Sometimes I skip the two sides and I put the shell here. But because of that extra spacing, I thought maybe three might work. But now I'm thinking just a shell in this space and a shell in that space might be might be just enough. I don't know. We will find out. I. We'll get a couple more shells across and then we'll back up and take a look at it. Having a have a feeling that this might be the right, the right way to go. Experimentation is always worth it. Okay, I'm three past it. And that now that little space, it's a bit gappy, but then again, so are these because it's that size four weight. It does look a little more even though, doesn't it, everybody? Let me just make it so you can see it. I'll put it right flat on the, the. So that little tail, get the tail out of the way. Yeah, that looks way more even, doesn't it? So in this case, because of that open zigzag join, my two corner spaces are just far enough away that putting a shell in each one is perfect. And that little chain one gives me enough breathing space over that lattice join. Yeah, that's it. Two works. All right, that's what we're going to do. And I'll do exactly the same thing across the bottom because I know that'll work across the bottom. Thank you very much, everybody. Let's continue. Shout out to the new member, Brian. Brian, welcome. Welcome to your Silk membership. <laughs> Thank you. So, two it is. The community has spoken. I don't mind pulling out a row. That's another thing, you know, if you're working on a project, even if you're working from a pattern, you know, your tension, your yarn, your hooks, it's always a little bit different than everybody around you. So it's worth it. It's worth it to, you know, all right, finish the row, back up, take a look. Do you like it? Does it look okay? Do you think you could maybe put a little more ease in one area or maybe tighten up another? Um, I love to do that. I, I feel like a little a little bit of extra fiddling as I go saves me from getting, you know, too far away down down into the pattern and then going, oh, I really don't like the way that row looks, you know, six rows back. So I don't mind taking out half a row if it means saving not taking out six rows later. <laughs> Okay, and that last shell in the chain to corner space. And before I continue, I stop, I take a look at that row. Oh, that is so much better. So much better. Yes, yes. So much better. Nice and even all the way across. So I do not need that third shell worked into the seam. I thought maybe I did, but turns out I don't. I think that looks way better. And that also gives the seam that much more strength because there isn't too much um, ease up top. I like it. I like it a lot. Boy, I love that orange. Oh, I just love that orange. Okay. Hook back in the loop. 
Now, shout out to Barbara. She figured out how to um, renew, which we really appreciate. Great, Barbara. Thank you for renewing. I'm so happy to hear it worked. <laughs> All right, um, just like the mitered part of the granny squares I was making, when you get to the end of a row, if you're working the straight granny shell stitch, let's just make sure I don't tangle up my yarn here, you chain three on top of that shell you finished, turn the blanket very carefully. The bigger a blanket gets, the more work there is to turn it. Oh, I love the colors in this. And then just like that mitered shell stitch, you are going to skip over top of that shell that you just finished and you're going to work into the next chain one space. So your even rows, the second row of your straight shell stitch starts and ends with a post. It's either a chain three or a double crochet. And your odd rows, so the first row of your straight granny shell stitch or the every three, four, three, five, seven, et cetera, all your odd rows start and end with a shell. So just like the mitered part of the granny square, except that you're not working a corner, you're only working back and forth across a single straight edge. And this is how you elongate a granny square. Hi, Lynette. I love you and Stitches family. I would love you to do a crochet wind spinner tutorial. Just saying. <laughs> okay. I've made a few of those. I love anything for the garden. I hope to really get into the gardening mood soon around here. As soon as it stops being cold and chilly. Mr. and Stitches is busily posting links and helpful things in the chat. Thank you, Mr. and Stitches. Well, I have posted our YouTube channel. Someone asked about baby blankets. Let them know we have many. Oh, gosh. We've got so many baby blanket tutorials. Uh, we have, I think, an entire playlist of baby blanket tutorials. We also have a playlist of just baby crochet. Um, yeah, lots, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of baby blankets. I mean, they're just so fun and easy to make. You know, they're small, they don't take up too much time, they don't take up too much yarn. And it's always nice to be able to give a, a new baby a blanket. Oh, this is, this is good. So I think I'm gonna continue with the law of twos that I was basing much of this blanket on so far. So um, I'm going to make, because I have a lot of orange, I'm going to make, oops, four rows of, I'm going to do four rows of orange off the top of my blanket, and that will mimic the size and the, the width of the colored stripes in the rest of the square. So I'm going to do four rows of granny shell stitch back and forth across the top and across the bottom in the orange. And then... I'm gonna decide what comes next. I don't know, I'm kind of decide. I had I had this design in my head and then it changed and then it changed again. And now I'm just going with it. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do stuff based on kind of how much yarn I have. And um, cause I am kind of hoping to use up these balls of yarn. Like I said, I kind of ran out of, I thought I had more gray than I actually do, but uh, I've got just a little bit left, but I'm gonna make some kind of a little accent and work it into this blanket just so I don't have it kicking around the craft room. We don't actually sell any yarn. Um, I just saw a little, a little comment there from, from Brian. Uh, we don't, we don't sell yarn. Um, we do have a pretty great sponsor though. I'd love to shout out lion brand. Um, they're, they aren't sponsoring this particular video, but they have sponsored us in the past. They're very, very good to our show. And Lion Brand is a, a brand of yarn my family's been using for a long time. So we were really delighted to uh, partner up with Lion Brand. I love Lion Brand yarn. Um, I would say that even if they weren't sponsoring us. <laughs> 
Um, in fact, one of the, the 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 pretty white yarn I'm using in this blanket is the Pound of Love by Lion Brand. Um, so you can purchase from their website or wherever you can buy Lion Brand yarn. And um, I recommend that, especially the Pound of Love. It's actually a pretty good bang for your buck right now, too, I would say. Um, and it's a nice feeling acrylic. I really like it. All right, I'm at the end of the row. And because this row started with a post, I know it needs to end with a post. I also know it needs to end with a post because I'm faced with a shell and no space to work into. So I chain one and I just find the top of that last stitch of the shell from the previous row and double crochet into it. And that is the end of row two. Oh, that little bit of orange. Love it. Okay. I'm gonna chain three. Carefully turn my blanket around. Shout out to Nico for purchasing channel membership for uh, for people. Oh, thank you, Nico. Nico. Like today's winner is JoJo. Nico has purchased a membership gift, and JoJo has won it. Thanks so much. So I chain three, I turn, and of course I want to start my third row, my odd row with a shell. So into that chain one space there, I'm just going to work two more double crochets because that chain three at the beginning counts as a double crochet. And there's the first shell of the row. Chain one and work a shell into every chain one space across. So I'm about to pause because I've just had another idea. <laughs> this is so my brain. What if instead of making a row of four to mimic this, I do a row of two across the top, I do a row of two across, uh, two, two rows I should say of orange across the top, two rows of orange across the bottom, and then I work my first two rows of border all the way around the entire blanket in orange so that I have four rows of orange up top, four rows of orange at the bottom, and then just two rows of orange at the side on either side. Is that going to look weird? It will still tie in my little zigzag. Jade is rapidly thinking. I need that meme of the, of the person with all the mathematical equations floating around her head. Yeah, I wish we could post memes. Um, you know what? I think I'm just going to continue. I think I'm going to do the four rows of the color across the top and the bottom, I'm gonna stick with that original plan and I'll figure out the first row of border in a little while. And it might even just be white, I don't know, we'll see. Oh, I love this orange though, this orange is so sunny and happy. Big shout out to a new channel member, Texas B. Welcome, Texas. Oh, Tiffany's got some hand cramps. Take a break. Put that nut, put that needle down or the hook down and just uh, squeeze out your fingers. Gent gentle stretching. Don't like those hand cramps. Those are so annoying. Yeah, this is definitely a, a 60s or a 70s sort of orange, Lena. I, I think that might be one of the reasons I, I kind of like. I, it's just a little more creamsicle than that, though. This isn't one of those. It's not the... I always kind of equate the orange of the 70s with uh, almost like a fire, like a rich, fiery orange. But this is a little bit more like a creamsicle, like there's a bit more white kind of worked into it. Don P says, you are doing some of my favorite stitches. Oh, Don, think, Don says I'm doing some of her favorite stitching. I love the shell stitch. I mean, come on. It is just so fun and simple and fast you don't you almost don't even have to look at where you're going half the time because you're just feeling for that next space to work into everybody's weighing in with uh how many rows of each color this is great i love the i love these community built blankets <laughs> the mitered granny square uh pattern so the pattern uh, for the extra large mitered granny square that we did on Friday last week is available in our Etsy shop. That pattern includes um, just some very general joining and simple border um, instructions and stuff in it. But it's kind of that that's designed more just to kind of get you started. So like if you make a, a simple blanket, now you know how to sort of join them and add a at a border and you've got a complete project. But this but you can also just do what I'm doing and like try this, try that. Go nuts with the whole, like, oh, I'm going to join using the such and such stitch. I'm going to 
at a completely different border. That's like entirely up to you. This is the whole point behind uh, square motifs like granny squares. You can just use them as the base building block for so many awesome things. I'm also thinking um, that I'd like to use the mitered granny square to to do some other kind of funky projects. Like I think that it would make a really striking. Um, it would it would make a really like a small version of this would make a really striking uh, bag. I think it would make a really cute uh, sweater. Um, you'd have to be kind of like thoughtful about where you placed your your mitered granny squares into a sweater, but I think that sort of asymmetrical look would look really kind of cool. I don't know. I also also just love how quickly a row goes by. I'm looking at the. Oh, thumbs up! Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Mr. Instance just keeps reminding me to kind of give an eyeball to the chat here every once in a while. My my head's on a swivel. I'm kind of keeping an eye on what I'm doing. I'm keeping an eye on my yarn. I'm trying to sort of see the, the chat every couple of seconds. <laughs> oh, hi. Hey, I'll figure it out her membership. Elle's got Elle's in her in her regular account today. <laughs> All right, this row began with a shell, so I know it ends with a shell, and that is row three in the history books. Gee, let me see if I can get the rest of the blanket out of the way so you can see that. How's that look? Everybody see that okay? Oh, there is just something so, you know, another reason I think I love the, the shell stitch is because it, it has almost a almost uh, uh a i want to say like it's it looks like it was made by a not by a loom but you know what i mean like it was made um like a uh like a not even a machine it just it just looks so even there's just this this delightful uniformity this evenness to it it is just so it's just somehow so deeply satisfying to know that your own two hands can create something that just takes all the chaos of a ball of yarn and turns it into this gorgeous structured order of crochet. Ah, oh, I can't get enough. Shout out to Lynette who purchased a membership gift. And the winner is Christina. Thank you, 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 Christina. Chain three turn. This is row four of my extra straight shell stitch rows. I know it has to start with a post because the last row ended with a shell. So I chain three and then I immediately work into the next chain one space by putting in a shell. And I think this will be my last row of the orange just so I can kind of keep that continuity going. And then I'm going to flip the blanket upside down and I'm going to do exactly the same thing off the bottom. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being here, Elle. <laughs> Everyone is being so supportive. Oh, I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for your support and for being here. It is a uh, kind of the the sort of the sort of day of the week when you're glad the week is done. You're happy to look forward to the weekend. But boy, howdy, do you ever need your your favorite crafty people around you? I am very happy to be sitting here crocheting and chit-chatting with all of you. I hope you've all got a, a whip of some kind in your lap. I hope you've all got a, a beverage of some sort, and or at least you will have soon, uh, if you're not already tucked into bed for the night. Oh, who doesn't love getting into bed and then putting on like a live stream? Hello. That's like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I feel the same way, Elle. I think this crochet community helps to keep my head on the level. Everything is, uh, everything seems okay and possible when I spend an hour or so with you guys. Raven, thank you. Oh, you love the big, beautiful baskets. So do I. Hi, should probably do another one of those on a live stream. Would you guys like to make a big, beautiful basket of some sort on an upcoming live stream? Let's do a poll. 
Yeah, pool. Are we going to do a basket on a live stream? I, we did the bathroom basket, and I absolutely love that thing. I've been using it constantly. It looks so cute and crisp across the back of the toilet with all of its little toilet rolls sitting in it. But boy, do I ever need more big, beautiful baskets. The second I make them, I end up stuffing them full of stuff. That's why you see me lugging all my yarn around in this plastic bin. It's because all of my big, beautiful baskets are busy. <laughs> And you know what? Maybe we'll make the big, beautiful basket using using a different kind of yarn. I'm just thinking maybe it would be kind of a fun excuse to to try it with some different yarns. Um, I love the whole like you can just mix all these different scraps together and get something gorgeous and functional. Uh, yeah, maybe we should do that. I don't. Know. So let's see what the poll has to say. I'm open to doing any of these things. I think that's a lot of fun. I especially like to make stuff that you know is useful. I'm sure we're all kind of the same way. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love I love making the odd little amigurumi. I mean, they, those things make me happy. So technically, I guess that does have a function. If it makes me happy, it has a function. <laughs> but uh, as, a, as a homeowner, I can't get enough baskets. Seriously. Hey, Cherry. I did. I saw Raven with her super chat. Super oh, big God. thank you. Hey, Carol's back. I can always use more. I, I can always use more too, Carol. I it's baskets are so darn handy. And uh they're kind of nice to pick up and lug around. Oh my I've made I've made oh, I've lost count. I've got I've got at least four big beautiful baskets in the house right now. I've made others for other people. Um, but they're all totally full and busy in my closet right now because they're all holding clothing. So I literally don't have any actually holding yarn, which was the reason that I originally made them. So I obviously need to make more. Here we go. I've got all four of my orange rows off the top of my blanket done. So that's it for now. I'm going to snip that yarn and I'm going to flip the blanket over and do the same thing off the bottom. Okay. So now to make sure that I start on the same side, I'm just going to flatten it out, make sure that I'm staring. Where am I? Oh, I'm looking at the back of my blanket. And I know I'm looking at the back of my blanket because I can tell that's the back of the zigzag join stitch. Boy, that's that's attractive. You know, even the back of that join stitch is really attractive. I'm not sure if I like that better than the front, you know? Hmm. Poll is up. Make sure everyone votes. Oh, there's a poll up. Mr. Stitches has put up a poll on whether or not we should make a big, beautiful basket on a live stream. We got 75 votes. So 75 votes. I love the polls. It's uh, it's polls are fun. <laughs> yes, no. Yes, no. <laughs> this one's gonna be a little skewed, though. You'll see why. I, I, <laughs> 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 Mr. is going to be a bit skewed. Okay, I started going uh, working across the front, so I need to finish. So there is, that's how it looks across. The, oh, I love that. Oh, I love that stripe. Okay, so now I'm going to flip the whole thing over because I started working across the front. I now have flipped it so that I'm working across the bottom. And I'm going to start the whole process over again down here. So let me get my yarn. Hello, Jennifer. Still working on a project. I just bought some Af an Afghan Tunisian crochet wood hooks and cables. Ooh, wooden hooks. I love wooden hooks. Okay. Here's the corner. I'm going to make sure. Oh, I'm going to start with a standing double crochet. I'm holding on to that little tail as best I can. There we go. So there is my standing double crochet. I have to roll up the bottom of my blanket. Hang on one second, everybody. Let's just fold this up. Keep it from falling off the table. There we go. All right. That's a little better. And I will finish that shell with two more double crochets. There. And I'm off to the races. Chain one and a shell into the next space. <laughs> I'm ending the poll. Okay, Mr. and Stitches is ending the poll. 
And yes, yes, and no. <laughs> That's cute. Very, very cute. 98% yes. 98% yes. All right. We will definitely do a big, beautiful basket in a live stream. We will do that very soon, maybe right as soon as I get this blanket finished. We will have some fun with different yarns and uh, we will we will fiddle with it. We will fiddle with it together because I know a lot of people find that they they get them made or they start making them and they feel like, oh, it's a little floppy. It's a little little soft sided, but we've got helpful tips to make sure that that doesn't happen for you. So we will definitely do that. I could totally use a new big, beautiful basket. And I feel like if we're all working on them together, we're more likely to get the project finished because if you're working together in real time, it's like it gives you time to actually start and finish the project. So Vivi, handbag, 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 handbag. <laughs> May is tinnitus RA awareness month. May, so Katie says May is tinnitus RA awareness month. Okay. Is that like a thing in the States? And celiac awareness. And celiac awareness month. All right. Cool. Good to know. All right. I'm back to that little thing. So back at the beginning, if you're just joining us, uh, I was humming and hawing about how to hop over top of my seam and I we figured out that it looks better if I work a shell into the last corner space of the first square chain one hop over the seam completely and then work the next shell into the next corner space of the next square and keep going because there's just enough breathing space given to us by that join in between the squares that it keeps a nice evenness of tension in that pattern all the way across. So that is how I'm treating the seams between the squares in this blanket. Super sticker from Raven. A super sticker from Raven? I think it's a sticker, I can't tell. A sticker is that, but it's a big thank you. Thank you, Raven. And Shell, hi Shell. Happy Friday, everyone. Just on a break from work and wanted to say a quick hello. I'm turning my mitered grannies into a baby blanket and loving it. Sweet. I made a mitered baby blanket, too. and It was so cute. It's all lie and lot like little little minty greens and pinks. Do you have a rose crochet tutorial? Uh, No, I don't have a rose crochet. We have a little rose bud. rose bud. Yeah, we have a rose bud, but we don't actually have a full rose. Um. We, we have other flowers. We haven't done a rose yet, though. Dawn says she really likes this join stitch. So fancy. I really like the zigzag, too. And I found, you know, not only is it is it pretty, um, it's pretty forgiving. You know, you can make several little errors as you're zipping along between the squares and it won't really show. But um, it's fast. It's so fast and I feel like I have to pay less attention doing the, the zigzag join than I do if I'm doing like a regular single crochet or slip stitch join. So I don't know, might be my new favorite for the next little while. You know how you do that? You kind of go in and out of, oh, I, I prefer this pattern or I like to do, I like to join my squares this way. You kind of, you, you get into almost like I want to say a phase. <laughs> All right, and a shell to end the first row off the bottom of the blanket. Elongating my little square lapgan into something a little more rectangular. I'm going to turn my blanket very carefully. Row two of the straight shell stitch starts with a post, a chain three in this case, and then three double crochet, chain one into the next chain one space, and I'm off. Do you think we could do the minor granny squares as, uh, as uh, the granny square game? I think so. Yes, we could do the mitered granny squares in the granny square game format. Absolutely. Um, I The only thing, the only thing is that you'd want to make sure that somehow, like I think I was thinking about this the other day and I was like, the mitered, the mitered granny square gets its, uh, its graphic appeal 
from the fact that the colors indicate where that corner is. Um, so when you're changing colors, you can really see that delicious, you know, 90 degree turn that the, that the stripes in the square are taking. And if it was just a hodgepodge medley of yarns, it wouldn't be as obvious. So I've been kind of problem solving that because I think that would be a lot of fun to use the mitered granny square. Um, or maybe, I'm not sure if this would work, um, kind of make that somehow a pitfall. I, I don't know. I have to give that a little thought. Mr. and Stitches and I love playing with game rules. So I think we're, uh, we'll, we'll give that some more thought. We're, we're working on getting ourselves set up so that we can play the game again with everybody. Um, as most of you know, at this point, we've uh, resettled the craft room in a different room. And we've been sort of shuffling everything around and it's uh, we're still kind of trying to find the best way to do everything and fit fit the two of us into the same room, <laughs> which doesn't always work. That's why I've got him down the well right now. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm starving and very thirsty. You're not starving and thirsty. Don't you play that sob story with everybody. They're going to think I'm a horrible wife. <laughs> you've got you've got plenty of coffee and treats down there. I saw to it myself. <laughs> Lori says, do you have a shell in C2C? Would it work? I figured you would be able to. Yes, yes, we do. We've got a uh, corner to corner shell, granny shell, um, granny square uh, tutorial. We've got that. It creates a granny square that basically looks more like a diamond. It's really cool and it's really easy. Um, we'll link that down below after this has become a, a regular video. But yeah, you can totally do that. The shell to shell, a C2C, C2C shell stitch. It's really cool. Very easy to. Yes, Tiffany, I agree. We need the bell and Mr. and Stitches back in the same room. Actually, I would like I would like Mr. and Stitches and the ukulele back in the same room. Everyone misses the bells, the ukulele, and the granny square game. <laughs> and me. And you. Well, of course everybody misses you. You you sound so funny, kind of like murmur, 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 murmur in the background. Jessica Rogers says I'm a fibber and no one should list no no one should believe what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> Jessica Rabbit thinks Mr. and Stitches is a fibber. <laughs> there is no All right, that's row two finished with a post, chain three turn. Oh, I'm on the fire now. This is great. And I have to start immediately with a shell. The pool noodle's missing. The pool, yes, the I agree, Katie. The pool noodle is missing, but I have to say, I can say whatever the heck I want right now. And Mr. Insitch just can't smack me with a pool noodle. So, <laughs> <laughs> plus he has no idea if I'm cheating. But then again, I'm not really playing anything right now. So. <laughs> oh, thank you, Nico, and Debbie. Debbie's won a new a new membership. Wonderful. Tanya, you really like it? I like it too. I love these different colors together. Every time I finish a blanket, I'm like, it's my favorite. And then I and then I make another one and I go, it's my favorite. <laughs> Barbara would like a well for her own, mister. <laughs> Where can I get a well for my mister? <laughs> I'm going to start selling wells. Yeah, Mr. Sushi just start selling selling wells. The wives are like, yeah, I'll take a well to shove my 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 man into. And the man's like, well, wait a minute. And then he gets to the bottom of the well and sees how awesome it is. He's like, you know what? That's fine. I'll just stay down here. Just keep the sandwiches and coffee coming. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It is a delightful Friday afternoon with my favorite community of crafty crocheters. Thank you all so much for being here. 
I am I am putting this blanket together in front of your eyes. I haven't I, other than just finishing off a couple of the uh, the granny squares that we started last Friday. Uh, we did the zigzag join live on Wednesday night. I am just elongating the blanket now. So I'm working off the top and off the bottom of this this otherwise square blanket so that I can make it a little more rectangle. And then I'm going to add a border and we'll just see how far we get today. We got a new member, Debbie. Debbie, welcome. Katie says to get you when you're not looking. <laughs> to find the pool rule. <laughs> Jessica Rabbit would like a well just to hide. <laughs> hey, why do you think I won't leave this? Yeah, Mr. Sitch just likes to hide in his well. You know what's funny? The wives would buy the wells for their husbands, and then the husbands would be like, hey, this place is amazing, and never come out. Yes, exactly. That's what I said. We'd we'd get we'd get our husbands these wells, and then we'd be like, where are our husbands? Oh yeah, they're way too happy down the well Tell Katie she can't crochet until her hands heal. Yeah, Katie, you can't crochet until you feel better. <laughs> we have banned Katie from crocheting until her, her wrist fits. Hello, E Peaches. From the doghouse to the cave to the well. <laughs> Oops, did I put in an extra? No, no, I did that. Oh, yes, I did. Ha ha. Oh, I did it again. Sometimes my hands get so excited, I do a half double crochet instead of a double crochet. <laughs> I'm happy that we're entertaining Molly. Yes, I'm happy that we're being entertaining. Oh, my gosh. Mr. and Stitches is literally... Not in this room. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Elle wants to know if you get service that far down. <laughs> it's, a little spotty. it's a little spotty. All right, I'm working on row number four off the bottom. Boy, that happened fast. Lady B, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Remind all the new members to check out our uh, community page. Yes, if you're a new member, make sure you check out the community tab. That is where everything gets posted to members first before it goes anywhere else. And uh, that is available by clicking on the um, community tab button from the YouTube homepage. And you can get to the YouTube homepage by just clicking on my name if you see it anywhere. Hey, thank you, Uncle Steve, for donating a membership. It looks like Polo won it. Hi, Crystal. I saw uh, Lori asking a question about nylon a moment ago. Um, Nylon is is a pretty hard wearing yarn, like a fiber. So if you, I've 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 never made anything using nylon, but um, I I know that uh, you can make good slippers using that particular fiber, mainly because it it wears so well. Like you know, you're not going to walk a hole through it. So most of the nylon crochet and knitting that I've seen has been mostly slipper related. Mr. and Stitches is posting links in the chat. So if you want to see the members perks, you can click on that link. Uh, and you can also just click on the name Jada and Stitches under any of our videos and it'll take you to the homepage and you can find the community post there. And that goes for everybody. If you're subscribed, you can also check out all of the community posts that we have for everybody by clicking on my name, going to the channel homepage and then clicking on the community post tab. Um, just community and then all those little posts in there. There's something for everybody. We post regularly. Uh, if anyone wants to gift memberships, 
you click on the dollar sign and you select membership gift gifting. Yeah, Mr. Institute says uh, the membership gifting is uh, possible by clicking on the um, what did you say? <laughs> At the little dollar sign symbol in the bottom of the live chat box, and it's one of the options there. He's a. <laughs> Someone asked in the chat. Oh, somebody asked in the chat. Mr. Instiches is muttering things to me from down the well, so I'm trying to kind of pay attention to everything here. The the blanket in front of me, a little bit of the chat, Mr. Instiches. You're doing great. Uh, oh, Vima, hi Vima. She says nylon is really good for purses. She's made a few with it. Well, Vima would know. Her purses are absolutely gorgeous. Yes, yes, it would be a very good um, uh, fiber for purses because it's hard wearing, exactly. Makes for good slippers, makes for good purses. And ending with a double crochet. That is, wow, that was fast. That's four rows off the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna snip my yarn. Remember, we're gonna reassess. Here we go, okay. So let me turn this around. Doesn't really matter which is the top or the bottom since this is kind of a square, but am I looking at the front of the back? I'm looking at the back. All right, let's look at the front. Let's look at the front. I've got all these little tails showing still. Okay, so here we go. The top and the bottom look absolutely the same. I like it. I like it. And now the question is, do I continue to add a couple rows of color, a couple more stripes? So like four more rows of say the green off the top and off the bottom, four more rows of maybe the current off the top, off the bottom. I wanna make sure I have enough left to do um, the border. So, hmm, thinking, thinking, thinking. A big shout out to Molly, one of our longtime members, who says, I think the membership gifting is such a nice addition to YouTube. And Molly gifted a membership. Thank you, Molly. Molly, Molly has gifted a membership and Kate has won it. Thank you so much. And Vima has a good a good tip. She says, if you're going to use the nylon, make sure you use a bigger hook because it'll avoid hand pain. I would like to second that. Anytime you feel like you're in, you're you're, you're using like wool or a grabby material like nylon, uh, switching to a larger hook can often help. And you don't want to struggle because that's the first that if you're struggling to crochet, you know, because you're you've got so much resistance from the yarn, um, that is going to cause fatigue and cramping a lot faster. So definitely, definitely be aware of that. Good tip, Vima. Um, I'm also trying to think here if this is as tall as I, you know what? Why am I thinking? Let me just grab my measuring tape and measure. <laughs> All right, I'm going to spread this out sideways. So give me one second, everybody. So here's one end, here's the other end. So grab my measuring tape. Now it's not blocked yet, so I know it's going to get a little bigger. <laughs> so uh, just from the top of one square to the top of the other is 31 and a half inches, but that's unblocked and not stretched. So it will be around 32 inches. Um, because these are 16 inch squares, plus there's the give from this. But now with the top and the bottom, it is 36 inches from top to bottom, and it will be 32 inches from side to side. So I guess my question is, is 32 by 36 a difference enough to be visually interesting, or do I require a couple more stripes? Hmm. <laughs> do I want to add that green at the top and the bottom and then put on the border? You know what? I think I do. I think I do. All right. I'm going to do that. So here we go. I'm going to do exactly the same thing now, but with the green. Let's see how fast I can crochet. Feeling pretty limber here. I am now switching to green. This is a real size four medium weight yarn. Unlike the orange which was a 
DK weight or a size three weight yarn. Oh, I'm going to do the double crochet thing again. Standing double crochet. There we go. Work over top of these tails. That one wants to split. I got to re, I got to reorient here. I'm using a thicker yarn, so now I've got to change up how I hold my hook and everything again. Just my tension a little bit. I'll weave in the tails later. All right, here we go. Tiffany just found a cupboard full of yarn. She didn't yarn. She didn't know she had. Well, that's fun. That's like finding a $20 bill in the pocket of your jacket, like from one winter to the next. <laughs> Hmm. How does that look? That looks good to me. All right. Yep. Four rows of green on the top and the bottom. And then I might start adding the borders on because that will give me another, what, three inches per side? Is that what it's doing? No, it's another two inches roughly, but that's unblocked, not stretched. So, and this is going to be just a little bit bigger because it's a bit of a thicker yarn. Whoops. <clears throat> Debbie says, yes, more rows. <laughs> Heather is working on the fan stitch baby blanket. Lovely. I love reorganizing my yarn. Hey, that's something you can kind of like set time aside to do on the weekend and then tell yourself that you actually like cleaned and organized. <laughs> it's basically just playing with yarn, but <laughs> re reorganizing it is actually really smart because it, it reminds you of what you've got. You'll realize that maybe you have more of one color than you thoughts so it'll save you from buying you know anything you don't need and you might just be inspired to make a new project that happens to me all the time lady b says i want to start this blanket today uh, i think we have around three or four videos on there right yeah um lady b if you want to start this blanket we've got um so the live stream we did last friday is where we started the extra large mitered granny square we also have a tutorial on the regular mitered granny square, which uses the same concept. So if you need kind of like a quick recap of just sort of corners and edges and stuff, that'll that'll get you going. Uh, I made four of the extra large granny square. Then we attached the four of them together on Wednesday night on the live stream using the zigzag stitch, which I'm currently in love with. Uh, and now I'm just elongating it. So instead of making just a big square lap gan, I decided I wanted to make a, a slightly rectangular one. And I'm adding rows off the bottom and the top before I add a border. So originally we thought we'd be doing the border today, but hey, you know, <laughs> we're doing this instead. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, we also have a tutorial on how to do this. So we've got a tutorial on um, the straight granny shell stitch, which is exactly what I'm using to elongate this blanket. And it works off of granny squares, just, or just little granny squares without being attached to anything. And it also works off sort of like having attached all your granny squares. Um, yeah. But first you get to you get to decide what colors you're going to use. That's my favorite part of starting a blanket. I go into my stash and I'm like, all right, what do I want to use up? What looks nice together? Oh, these are pretty. Oh, that's pretty. Robin made a yarn bowl, a crocheted yarn bowl. Great. What a good idea. I'll be interested to know how your yarn bounces around inside of it. Like, do you feel like it's uh, what? what kind of yarn did you use? Did you use like a smooth yarn or a cotton yarn or nylon, perhaps? And who's that looking for a 
Jennifer, do you have any recommendations for a good 14 ounce yarn spinner? Okay, so I don't know exactly how big my yarn winder is. Like, I don't know. Uh, I'm afraid I, I only have a, a rough understanding of ounces. I know that like 16 ounces is roughly 400 grams, which is one of those giant balls of yarn, like a, almost like a pound of love. Um, so this is the remnants of the pound of love. I did that on my yarn spinner. And this one, if for comparison's sake, is a heck of a lot bigger. I'd say this was about 16 ounces when it was, this is probably a 16 ounce ball of yarn. Um, I have the uh, Knitter's Pride wool winder and it's manual, which I love. It's a rainbow wood, which I also love. Uh, we have a, a whole unboxing and a video on it on our channel. I've, it's the only yarn winder I've ever used. So full disclaimer, I've never used any others but I absolutely adore it and I'm not looking to replace it anytime soon. And it can handle huge balls of yarn um, and it can also do small remnant scraps. So it's kind of my favorite thing. I also like that it's manual and not electric because that gives me all the power. I can decide how fast to spin, when to spin, if I need to stop, rewind, you know? Um, so I highly recommend that yarn spinner, but it's the only one I've ever used. So there's that. <laughs> Uncle Steve sent you a... Uncle Steve! He sent me a unicorn! Thank you! How did you know I love unicorns? I mean, who doesn't love unicorns? Because <laughs> there's something wrong with you if you don't love unicorns. I love putting yarn colors together. I love, I love that whole process. It is just so much fun. Do we have any tutorials that are specific to the standing double crochet? Yes, we do have a tutorial on the standing double crochet, or at least how to do it. Um, that is a little short video that we put out today. Um, and in that video, we describe when you can use it. So, for example, if you're basically, I use it if um, it's a double crochet stitch that the row uses or starts with. So as long as the row starts with a double crochet, you can use a standing double crochet stitch to start the row. But I use it if I'm changing colors, because if I'm not changing colors, then I just chain three and turn and my chain three operates as a double crochet. But if I'm joining colors or joining joining yarn to start a row and that row is double crochet or at least starts a double crochet, that's when I would use a standing double crochet. That's, you know, if I'm in the mood to. Sometimes I think, nah, I really just want to, you know, anchor this yarn because it's a bit slippery as a, uh, you know, as a slip stitch and then work over top of my tail. I guess it just depends on the mood I'm in. Um, but uh, it is, you know, why not? It's a, it's sort of one of those little, it's like an option. That's another thing I love about crochet. Crochet is full of options, full of options, full of, of, of good substitutions, you know? Um, you also, you know, if you, some people might find joining their yarn with a standing double crochet is cumbersome because you've got to control that little tail. You have to yarn over before you even pick up a loop. So you're kind of, you know, you got to hold your hook. You've got to hold the yarn. You've got to keep control of the yarn so it doesn't spin around your hook. So if you're brand new to crochet, you might find a standing double crochet to start with to be a bit cumbersome and it's easier to join with a slip stitch, you have control, chain three, that's easy. And then that stands in as your double crochet. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and in the grand scheme of things, it's very difficult to look at the aggregate of stitches in a blanket and go, oh, there's a chain three. You know, you really have to sort of settle in and look for it. And that's even if you know how to crochet. <laughs> Most people won't know the difference between a chain three and a double crochet if they're looking at a, a whole blanket, so. Membership, but she, but doesn't have the option. I, I seem to recall you have to turn it on somewhere. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Regina's wondering how she can gift memberships because she can't figure it out. Um, Mr. Stitch has just reminded me that there might be a button somehow, somewhere you have to, like, that you've got to that. To yeah, he says it's it's sort of something that says like allow gifting or allow allow gifts i'm not but i don't remember where it is we don't know i'm not sure where that would be like i i know it's somehow in your settings your youtube account settings but i honestly don't really know where that is. like we said this is still really new 
So YouTube is kind of <laughs> moving around these things. If anybody knows in the chat, if you wouldn't mind, um, yeah. if you wouldn't mind kind of weighing in on that, that would be great. Don likes to go rogue on a pattern. Yeah, that's what I do, Don. I sometimes follow a pattern from start to finish and I go, yeah, that was nice. And then I maybe do it again and I adjust it where I feel like it needs to be adjusted for me. Um, but sometimes, I don't know, especially with the super, super old patterns, <laughs> I just, I just eventually end up doing my own thing. <laughs> a lot of that's probably though to do with how much yarn has changed over the years. Uh, Barbara says it's under membership perks, so you have to go. Okay, I'll put the link in. Okay. We have to go to membership perks, and then you have to uh, turn it on. So Mr. Insitch says it's under membership perks, and then you have to turn it on. So he's going to post a link in the chat. There should be some sort of turn on gifts button at the end of that link somewhere. <laughs> oh, this looks this looks so nice. I'm just so happy with the way this is turning out. I like the the shock of color above above the border of the squares. This is this is really kind of neat. We will once I get this done shoot a little video of the whole thing so you guys can sort of see it. Um, you know, in a in a better situation than just sort of all crumpled up on the craft table in front of me as I work on it. Uh, we'll see how far I get today, and we'll see how far I get over the weekend with it. Oh, big shout out to Tiffany. She figured it out. Thank you. Oh, Tiffany, thank you. Thank you for figuring it out. What a delightful group. Everyone's loving the Miter Granny Square blanket. Well, Miter Granny Squares are just so nifty. I mean, first of all, if you love Granny Squares, and I mean, I'm going to say most of us here probably do. <laughs> um, they're fun to make. They're super useful. They're a great, great way to use up scraps. But my gosh, is it ever fun when there's something you already like, like a Granny Square, and then like this funky twist comes along. I love it. Kathy! Kathy says, question, looking for clear containers to store yarn. Any suggestions for the best way? I currently use boxes, crafts, and grocery bags, crates and grocery bags. Clear containers. Um, well, I guess it depends on where you are. I like uh, clear um, Rubbermaid containers or, you know, like those sort of like storage containers that are clear. You can see into them, but I don't like them to be too big. And then you've got to take into account where you're going to store everything. So is this all going in a closet? How much space have you got? Is it going under your bed? How much clearance is there? Do you want to store them under the craft table? Again, how much clearance is there? How wide are they? Can you still get your legs under the table to sit comfortably and work? Um, you want to take some me measurements of the space in which you wish to store anything and then head off to the store and look for containers that fit it. Then you want nice tight fitting lids so that it, they keep all the dust and you know air, anything. You want to keep your your yarn in air, not airtight, like we're not talking canning level here, but just like a nice tight fitting lid. Um, the type that snaps shut so that if you pick the, the bin up and it's above your head, the lid's not going to come flying off and all the contents are going to spill onto your face. I've done that. It stinks. <laughs> Um, so, you know, while you're in the store kind of browsing through the containers, make sure the lids snap on and snap off and uh, and don't get don't try not to get them too, too big. You want to be able to lift them. You want to be able to lift them above your head if necessary. And you want them all to be somewhat stackable. Um, those are my recommendations. So, Shout out to Nico, another gifted membership. Nico, thank you. Nico has shared another gift of a membership. Who's the winner this time? Let's see. Katie. Katie. The winner is Katie. Katie has won a membership. Thank you. 
we will make sure that we've got something. Darren says, I don't see. What we'll do is we'll look up where and how to turn yes. it on because we don't really remember. Yes. Post it because a lot of people are asking. Yes, Darren, Mr. and Stitches is just saying we're going to look into um, how you find that allow gifts button and the whole membership perky thing. We're going to look into that a little bit more after the stream and then we'll post a note about it on the community tab um, afterwards once we've got some decent information. We'll also, you know what, we'll also post it in the description box of this video just in case for whatever reason you're on a device that doesn't show the community posts all that well or all that clearly. So we'll do that um, a little later this afternoon. Um, and we'll also post a couple things um, just because I love to follow up a live stream. You know, there's inevitably something interesting and useful comes out of these streams we do because we've got all these crafty brains in one place all working together. And I love to be able to just sort of reiterate something super useful. Um, and that's a nice way to kind of tie up Tie up the afternoon spent crocheting with everybody. I think um, also, Kathy, we did a live stream on or a video. Maybe we've done this a few times on different ways to store your yarn or different yarn storage recommendations. That rings a bell with me. I think we've done a live stream on it and I think we have a video on it, too. And we've got a lot more more concisely thought out uh, suggestions for yarn storage in those scenarios. So you might want to check those out too. Tina is trying to learn knitting and it's not going well. She can't figure out how to hold a second needle. <laughs> oh, my dear. I started with knitting and I felt just as frustrated as you did once upon a time. But um, if I can say anything about learning to knit or crochet or tat or do cross stitch or any of the needle arts, for heaven's sakes, just about anything you might want to try, the learning curve can be annoying, especially the older you get. I think as we get older, we think we should be capable of doing things right off the top, like just right off the bat. Yeah, I should be able to do this. I can hold a pencil. How come I can't crochet? Um, and it's about your whole body needs to learn something new. And the older we get, the harder that becomes, um, you know, so your body has to decide how to manipulate its tendons and its muscles in order to hold a hook or a knitting needle. It's got to it's got to get used to a different thickness, a different weight, a different feel. Sometimes knitting needles are cold when you pick them up and it's like, Bleh! Um, there is so much that your body needs to get used to when you're learning something new. So the best thing you can do is say, this is going to take a while. I'm going to give myself the permission to make a lot of dumb mistakes. I'm going to, I'm going to knit, knit something that looks awful <laughs> and I'm just going to practice. I'm going to get some yarn. I don't care about. I'm just going to work away. I'm going to set a timer and just work at it for five minutes. And then I'm going to take a break. And then maybe a little while later, I'll come back and I'll set the timer for five minutes and I'll try again. And every time you come back and then you sleep on it and then you come back the next day and then you sleep on it and you come back a week later, it'll be a little easier and a little easier and your attention will make more sense. And the less you think about what you're doing, just do it. Just focus on making some stitches. The less you think about, oh, I got to hold my hook this way or I've got to hang on to the needles a certain way. Just don't think about it. Just start. Just do it. And your body will do its thing. Your body will figure out how much strength it needs to hold this and what angle your shoulders should be held at in order to get this particular stitch to work the right way. It will come just like everything in your entire life always has. You just need to be patient with yourself, stick with it, set a timer. Don't be in a hurry to be perfect right off the bat. And uh, it'll work out. It'll absolutely make sense. All of a sudden, you'll turn a corner one day and be like, oh, my gosh, I just knit my first dishcloth. And you'll be so proud of yourself. <laughs> ah, I've got four rows already. My gosh, that was fast. OK, time to do the bottom. Yes, Nico says, go for progress, not permission. It took me three months to learn how to brush my teeth with my left hand. Ooh, that would be an interesting challenge. That would be, I, I, I have to say, 
I have had to do things a little bit differently since I developed uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Because sometimes my right hand just doesn't want to work. I can't grasp things the way I used to. Um, I might try crocheting with my other hand at some point. And I can just imagine if I started trying to learn how to crochet with my left hand, I would look all manner of, of awkward. And I would probably, if I managed to make something like a hat or a granny square, it would probably look like somebody else made it. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's, a uh, it's a, it's a, it's, it's like Nico says, work, work for, for progress, not perfection. I love that. Great advice. Yes, Katie's mentioning to keep care instructions in your make ahead stash. If you make stuff and you put it in your make ahead stash, because it might end up being a gift, definitely make sure you put care and maintenance instructions in there with it. So if you're giving something away, they know how to treat it, like, you know, how they can wash it, how they should dry it, stuff like that. That is a great reminder, especially if you're making something like a blanket. Look how much time this takes, right? You don't want to have it off to somebody and then they, you know, throw it in the hot washing machine and the whole thing dis like just disintegrates. <laughs> Oh, okay. Mr. And Stitches is going to try and link a video in the chat. Yeah, it's, just a video, so. it's yeah, it's a random video. It's not, know. we don't know how good it is, but it, it does help try to explain the whole gifting membership membership thing. So the link is long, really? Yeah. All right, not going to work. No problem. We will still endeavor to find the information and make a concise uh, bullet point sort of summary of things that need to happen. And we will get that into the community post later. And we'll also make sure it's underneath the, um, the video in the description box uh, at some point later today. Anything we can do to try and help everybody out use the platform better, that was uh, helps everybody. There's so many neat things you can do with the YouTube platform and they keep kind of adding new stuff, but they're not very good about, you know, educating us, the users, on how to use all this stuff. <laughs> Tracy says she's working on the wave stitch lapgan, so that ripple or chevron stitch using Burnett blanket yarn. Is it the blanket yarn, Tracy? I love I love chevrons. That is such a that's another pleasing shape. Nico, thank you. And Carrie has won a membership. <laughs> Nico. Hey, Nico's really good at this. Maybe Nico knows where that is. Yeah, maybe Nico knows how to how to help us out and explain all that stuff to me. Does Nico know where to go and turn on membership options? It is Tracy. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's that. Oh, that's going to whip up really quick, too. That's another thing about that Burnett blanket yarn that's nice. It makes for a very quick project. <laughs> Nico's looking into it for us. Nico's looking into it. Thank you, Nico. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm pretty sure it's in the join area. Yeah. And you have to go, you have to select. Allow membership gifting. Yeah, I know there's a an allow button somewhere. I just can't remember where it is exactly. All right. So row two starts with a post. I am just bombing along here. Uh, we'll also make sure that we link the granny shell straight stitch video we did. 
quite a while ago um, down below. So if you want sort of a nice succinct recap of how and what I'm doing today, because um, this particular stitch works built off of a regular granny square. It works built off of an established granny square blanket. Um, and you can also just start it from scratch if you want to just make an entire blanket of the granny shell stitch, which I have done. I made a beautiful rainbow blanket on a live stream a few years ago just using the granny shell stitch. And uh, we've got a tutorial on how to do that. It's nice and succinct. So if you need to sort of get a recap, then we'll make sure that's posted for you guys down below a little later on. I think I'm going to finish this lovely green stripe and Paula figured it out for us. Oh, Paula figured it out? You go to the join, then top right click on the three dots, then click on allow gifts. Paula, that seems so simple and straightforward. Uh, that would be why we didn't understand it. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. It's the three dots. That's, of course, if if I guess that's on the, the software, I guess the software is going to show those three dots no matter what device you're on, right? I'm going to assume yes, because that. Uh, so the three dots are on the top right. The problem is the three dots are not always the same. Oh, you have to go to the Jada and Stitches page. Nico says, go into Jada's page, click the three dots, allow gifts. Okay. All right. I will link our homepage. Uh, Cherry, that is actually on the list of tutorials that we want to get to. The Granny Ripple Stitch. That is another fantastic way to use the shell stitch. So many projects, so little time. Hey, how wonderful is our little crochet community? Our crochet community is absolutely fantastic. They are friendly, funny, supportive, thoughtful, creative. I just love this group. There might be an issue between Apple and uh, Android. Oh, surprise, big surprise. surprise. Yeah. Yeah, Nico Nico brings up a point. There might be an issue between Apple and Android devices, which doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Um, so yeah, sometimes working on a computer, so as opposed to a tablet or a phone, a lot of these issues are solved on the computers or you know, laptop sort of thing. Yes, Sakura Sue says it only works on Apple from the Safari or Chrome internet browsers. The internet browser versus the YouTube app is often the best workaround. So instead of using the YouTube application on your phone or tablet, you open up your internet browser and you go to YouTube that way. And if it pops up with, oh, would you rather use the app? Just say no, you want to stick to the internet browser. And then you uh, use it like you would if you were using a computer. And that is the best workaround so far for everything. A little cumbersome, but it works. Here's a good question from channel member Ray Rio. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have a workaround for crocheting with vertigo? Wraith asks, does anyone have a workaround for crocheting with vertigo? So if you're suffering from vertigo, but you still want to do some crochet, how might you do that and not make yourself sick? <laughs> oh, that sounds that sounds troubling. Um that is a great question for the community, if anybody has any suggestions. I, I will admit, guys, I woke up with a, he a, a headache today. It was not great. It was one of those things that you could tell, uh-oh, this is going to go in a bad direction if I don't get a cup of coffee and a half a painkiller into me or something. So we're a little late today because 
Mrs. in Stitches here had a, a bit of a headache, but uh, I'm happy to say it has receded to nothingness. But I did get that nasty um, dizziness that sometimes comes with a headache. So like, you know, when that part when the pain recedes, but you've got that weird echo or out of body that just that weird I'm not myself kind of like everything moves a little a little slower. Um, if I stand up really quickly, I'll get that dizziness. So um, I'm trying to keep my head nice and level here so that I don't I don't get the spins. Charlie says neck exercises. Oh, Sue woke up with one too. Okay. Then drink a Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one bon bonanin, bon boninin, boninin, bon bonin. I don't know, Jill. What is a bon boninin, boninin? <laughs> Am I even saying that right? Close your eyes when you crochet, says Cherry. If you can do that, that might help. I don't know. I, I can almost do it. I can almost crochet with my eyes closed if I'm doing something repeating, like like an easy repeat, like this shell stitch, but not quite. Um, are you planning on finishing the whole blanket? Nope. I am finishing <laughs> this green stripe today. And then I think that will be my two stripes of color added to the top and bottom. And then... I will call it a day on the blanket, give myself a little break, and then we will do the border the next time. So um, anybody who was expecting to see the border today, I apologize, but this idea took precedence. I wanted to turn my little square into a bit of a rectangle. And then uh, we will add a border. Nothing fancy, just a nice way to finish it off and use up some of that yarn color that I want to get into the blanket. This is... Uh, I really love this. I love I love the ability to add a couple stripes of color, a bit of shock, a bit of difference at the top and the bottom, and also just make it a little bit more rectangular so that if I'm kind of stretched out on the couch with it, it's just long enough that it covers my toes. Katie says, please explain how to hold your working yarn without wrapping it around multiple fingers and the magic ball. Um, I don't know. I know a lot of people have different ways of holding your yarn because obviously we're all different. I don't know. I, I can't get the whole like wrap it around my fingers things to work. It never worked for me. So because I, I started knitting before I started crocheting and I was always kind of in the habit of running it through my two middle fingers. That is just where I started when I started crocheting. And now it's just the most natural thing in the world to me. So I don't think I could hold my yarn a different way without really working at it um, because I've tried that whole like, oh, you know, you wrap it around your baby finger or you wrap it around here and then you and it just it just stops. I, I It doesn't work for me. <laughs> so I know this is this is kind of the, the odd person out way to hold yarn. I know most people don't do this, but that's why I say it. whatever works for you. Right. Everybody's hands are different. Um, I grew up playing piano. Not everybody does. So maybe that's one of the reasons that the my two middle fingers feel very comfortable held together. They just naturally want to do that. So I have no problem squeezing yarn in between them. But other people might, you know, kind of go, what are you doing? <laughs> that's not that doesn't make any sense at all. I can't do that. It's uncomfortable. And then, you know, you find another way. I, my mother-in-law feeds her yarn with her right hand. I do it with my left. So whatever works for you try different methods and you will find one that works oh yes mr sister says to ms rabbit that he also struggles wrapping his arm around his fingers <laughs> you're getting trolled jessica rabbit you're getting trolled <laughs> Wow, fourth row already. Ah, I love the shell stitch. Once I get warmed up, I can really motor. This is lovely. I've done 16 rows. This is my 16th row of shell stitch today. So eight on either end of the blanket. I think that is lovely. Nice little bit of 
of uh, progress on my blanket. And then I think it'll be just long enough that I can comfortably cuddle with it. Raven would, uh, would like to uh, apologize for the big, beautiful basket idea. <laughs> Raven, thank you. That's okay. We'll just do it in, uh, in a series. No apology required, Raven. I love the idea of doing a big, beautiful basket uh, on a live stream. And maybe what we'll do is uh, so everybody can kind of work on it together. We'll break it up across, you know, a couple days in a row. We'll maybe like work a little hour, do another hour here, there. Just something simple so that everybody kind of has a chance to hang out and do a little work, but not feel overwhelmed with like a three hour, you know, three hour live stream. Everybody's sharing different ways to hold their yarn. This is great. Everyone's chiming in with the way they hold their yarn. Yeah. Kim, the word Bernat is Bernat. I know it's not actually French. If it was French, it would be B-E-R-N-E-T, in which case, if it's a French word, the E-T is pronounced A, like Bernay. I used to say Bernay for the longest time because I'd never heard anybody say the word Bernat, but Bernat is a proper name, apparently, not a word. So it's apparently Bernat, not Bernay. Thank you, Sue. Sue has sent a super sticker of a, a partying pair. <laughs> yes, so I'm going to do these 16 rows of shell stitch. So four in orange on either end and four in green on either end. And then we will put the border on in the next live stream. I think that's a nice way to break it up. And then we've built this blanket more or less all together with everybody. Love it. All right. I would love to take a handful of questions. Um, if anybody has any questions about the stitch we did today, working back and forth in the shell stitch, I know you you probably would have asked it otherwise uh, as we've kind of gone through the whole thing. But just in case you know anything's occurred to you, I'm going to just finish off my last row here, and then we'll take a couple questions, and then we'll call it a Friday. And um, the next live stream we do will be hopefully not too long from now, and we will get the border on. And with any luck, the headache won't come back either. <laughs> and end with a double crochet. Maybe while we're just wrapping up here, I will weave in some ends. Because I find, you know, you can, you can weave in all your tails when you're done the whole project. But somehow when I see a bunch of tails hanging like I've got here, they kind of make it look messy. And I like it to look like a neat project as I work. So... Let me start weaving in some tails. I have some. Oh, Nico, thank you. Thank you. And Ellen has won. Wonderful. I'm going to weave in some of my tails here. Just so they're not all hanging out and looking messy. And shout out to Penny for the super chat. Penny, thank you. What do we got here? One dollar super chat. Thank you so much. Just a, a sweet little, a sweet little smile. Tiffany's wondering about how to turn things into PDF. Um, you you have to to have software that lets you do that, but then you just export it to PDF. Like yeah, it's it's like saving a photograph. You can save a photograph as a JPEG or maybe a um, a P a PNP. Or you, there's all these different ways to kind of save. Like when you save your whatever, you I have different options sometimes. Like they're not. It's not just save as a you know a, a JPEG. Um, so when it you you change it as you're saving it, you save it as a different kind of um, file file format because PDF is just a file format. 
Um, and it like tons of different softwares allow you to save as a PDF and some don't. So you kind of have to know the software you're using. But that's it. That's all. That's how you do it. What do you do when your hands hurt, but you want to crochet and the squirrels are attacking you with their own wits? <laughs> Katie, Katie has some serious issues. It looks like not only has she got sore hands, but she's got attacking squirrels too. Katie is really struggling with the squirrels. <laughs> um, you know what? I've I said it the last last week, and I'll say it again. If you're if you're suffering from hand pain while you're trying to crochet, always take a break. Always take a break. Um, sometimes for me that means a couple days, which is you know sad. But if I really want to be creative and I want to crochet, and my hands just aren't, you know, allowing me to do that, that's when I get out my crochet journal, and I start updating all my crochet journal entries on all the projects I've been doing, because my gosh, can that fall by the wayside? Um, I, I find that if I'm updating my crochet journals, if I'm, you know, making little notes, or, you know, um, adding stickers, or whatever it is I want to do to kind of like just give it a bit of a scrapbooking feel that uses different parts of my hands and it gives my it gives those tendons that get so heavily engaged in crochet it gives them a break but I still get to be creative and I still get to kind of surround myself with my crochet oh I like weaving entails sometimes it's troublesome and annoying but Nico likes to share the love Nico does share the love oh A couple more tails here. I'm going to save some of my, like, I've got tails along the side where I joined uh, for the zigzag stitch, but I'm going to wait until I've got the border on before I weave those tails in because I don't really have anything to weave them into just yet. I think we're, uh, I think we're good for questions. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us on a Friday. Uh, we have got a lot of other little videos up this past week. We did the Mitered Granny Square live stream last Friday. We did um, a quick little standing double crochet how-to short video on Monday or Tuesday. So if you want to know a bit better how to do that and see it nice and clearly, we've got a video for that. It's nice and short. Uh, Wednesday night, we joined up all of these squares here using the zigzag stitch. So that's an hour from Wednesday night. That was a live stream. You can check that out too. And we've put up uh, yesterday a little video on how to figure out what the best hook would be to either join your squares or add a border, especially if you forgot the hook you used to make your granny squares. And this happens all the time. If you whip up a bunch of granny squares because you had some leftover yarn and then you shelve them and you didn't really make any notes and you didn't, you know, you didn't do any of that typical project planning that you might do because they were just some granny squares, but you don't remember what hook you used. That's a helpful little short video on what you can do to figure out what the best hook size to use would be. So uh, that all went up this week. We will post a few things once we figure out the whole membership thing. Thank you to Nico for the help and to Tiffany and a few other people who were Paula, who were looking into it for us. We'll post some quick Coles notes, so to speak, on that in the description box. And we'll have a couple of posts for you over on the community tab too a little later. And I hope you all have a wonderful crafty weekend that you stay safe, that you keep a, a happy, crafty thought in your heart as you head into uh, the end of your Friday. And um, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And that is it. Mr. and Stitches, do you have anything else to add? Uh, no, I think we will just see everyone next. All right. Next, uh, Mr. and Stitches will call out of the well, and uh, we will see you all in the next video or live stream, whichever that might be. Thanks for hanging out, everybody, and have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.